Hello, if you're new, my name is Micah, and if you have any video suggestions, you can post them in the comments down below, and let me know what's your favorite fashion style or aesthetic, I might make a video about it soon. If you do want help developing your style or getting a personal color palette, you can hire me as your personal stylist just going to cocostyling.com. We all know the stereotype of European women being the most fashionable of everyone, especially French women and Italian women. This one is going to be about French fashion and the next one is going to be about Italian fashion. So turn on your notifications if you do not want to miss it. The Parisian chic aesthetic stands out for being effortlessly fashionable. There are plenty of styles that fall under the minimalism umbrella so why am I pairing it with Parisian chic right now? The simple explanation of minimalism is that it is about reducing the unnecessary by keeping only the essentials. I really like the Marie Kondo approach to this because it links perfectly to this style. It's not necessarily about just minimalism by the regular standards, but it is about keeping the things that bring you joy. This also helps set apart the regular French chic and the one that most people associate with Paris itself. The first one is more about getting a wardrobe full of timeless pieces, but with this one you can also add a few things that represent your personal style by adding something that sets you apart. This part is really important because in my personal opinion, as a stylist and a fashion designer, the French chic style is great as a base or for inspiration, but I do believe that fashion is always a statement. Not in the sense that it has to be bold and loud, but in the sense that you should make it your own. This is where the famous does this item spark joy comes in. So my suggestion would be going for that effortless look and then adding a few pieces that set you apart from the person sitting next to you that is also wearing these sort of minimalist style. And here's a guide on how to look like a chic Parisian woman. Sort of. Not everyone in Paris dresses like this, but this is the guide on that aesthetic that most of us are familiar with. Of course, the first point is being effortless but chic. This is always said as a concept, but how do you even do that? Let me tell you a little secret from us stylists. The key most of the times with wearing a mix of casual pieces and something that is a little bit more dressed up. This is the way that you can avoid looking too casual but also you won't look overly dressed up. That is the important part about looking effortless. Getting your neutrals right. Usually when you look for inspiration, you will find lots of black, white, gray, and beige. Sometimes also navy and brown. But those are not the only neutral colors that you can wear. If you're only going to wear neutrals, you should make sure that they are the best neutrals for your features. There are a few factors that will determine this, but the first step would be determining if you're cool, warm or neutral. If you want to know more about that, you can click here and watch this playlist on how to find your best colors if you have a darker skin tone. You don't need to have a completely monotone wardrobe. Don't get me wrong. Having your staple pieces in a variety of neutral colors is key for this style, but you don't have to limit yourself to just wearing four main colors. This is the part where your accent neutrals come in. These are colors that are not the regular neutrals, but they are not as bold as regular accent colors. 
plus they are actually very easy to pair after you have your bases in neutral colors and accent neutral colors you can start adding a few pieces in accent colors usually bags shoes and complements like coats and sweaters to keep it simple to me the perfect formula for an outfit would be one to two pieces in a neutral or accent neutral color and then one bold color again to determine your right colors you can go to that playlist that i linked before or if you want me to do that for you you can hire me as your color analyst makeup you can keep it simple and almost barely noticeable but you can also add a few pops of color if you wish to try to avoid the full glam heavy makeup unless it is for a special occasion because it's not the everyday effortless look so if we're going for this style we should skip it this time foundation if you want you can completely skip the foundation and just wear concealer on a key point or wear a very lightweight foundation or a tinted moisturizer. Most importantly, the idea is to avoid looking cakey at all costs. Blush, bronzer and highlighter. Go for something very lightweight. It can be matte or shimmery but always done in a very subtle way. Lately, there has been a trend on the naturally bright look. I don't know if that, that would be the ideal name for it, but it's basically about reflecting your inner glow and using highlighters, bronzers, and body oils to make it look like you are some sort of ethereal being. So you can also do that. But I would be careful, especially if you're wearing neutral colors, because that is going to stain. Eyebrows. I swear, eyebrows are the key to beauty and looks maxing. Is the soft, soft mark, soft maxing? I think they call it. Yeah. Holy Grail. Eyebrows make or break a face. So if you can, try to invest in getting your eyebrows shaped at least once so that you know how to keep doing it yourself. I like to do it about once every month, yeah, or like bi-monthly, mainly because I'm lazy. I don't want to go to the brow bar so often. I also don't have brows, kind of. They're fake, they're not fake, but I've used all kinds of oils and techniques to make them look fuller. So the thing is that usually I just paint them on but yeah, I would definitely invest in that, especially if you have bushy brows or if you don't have brows at all, like me. <laughs> Lipstick. Just having your lips well moisturized and exfoliated is it. But if you want to add color, go for natural shades. It can be a nude shade or something a little bit darker. It doesn't necessarily have to be a nude shade, but it shouldn't be a very bold color. Hair. Something natural, mostly effortless. In order to pull off this look, it is very important to get the right hairstyle. This is where a lot of bloggers fail and tell you that you need bone straight hair. Um, and this doesn't work for everyone, especially if you are a woman of color. Most of us don't actually have bone straight hair. And we like wearing weaves and extensions. But wearing your natural hair is also an option, of course. I will be making a video about it soon, like natural hair appreciation. Androgynous looks. A masculine touch. Going back to the casual, dressy balance. Variation chic is actually a, not a hyper-feminine style. What I mean by this is not that if you dress like this, you're not feminine. What I mean is that they include some pieces that in the past were associated to masculine attire. Nowadays, it is the norm. This would translate into a more tailored look. Now, 
Not everyone looks good in sharply tailored clothes, including myself, but there's like a different type of blazer for every type of body. Just to sum it up, it is about that feminine and masculine contrast. For example, if you're wearing a very traditionally feminine dress, you can pair it with like a trench coat. Or another example would be pairing the leather biker jacket with a very frilly skirt. Details. Since you will be wearing mostly basic staple pieces, small details are everything. What you should ask yourself when you're buying for clothes is how can I reinterpret this into my own style? What is going to set me apart? Prints. Don't go for very loud pieces when you're going for basics. It is easier to go for classic prints that don't go in and out of style frequently. However, since this is about adding a little bit more of your own style, you can add other accent pieces that do have prints that are a little bit bolder. Speaking of trendy items, even if this is a classic style, it is still fashionable. Not meaning that classic styles are not fashionable, but in the sense that in this one in particular, it is important for you to add a few pieces that do reflect your own personality. A very good inspiration source for this would be the Vogue Runway app or website. Instead of going to the runway looks, go to the streetwear section. Whatever you choose to incorporate into your style to make it your own, it should be something that you bought because you like it and not because it's trendy, because trends go in and out of style very frequently, especially now. If you're here, hi! Now I'm going to talk about the wardrobe essentials. But let me know a little bit about your experience with your own style journey. Button down shirt. It doesn't have to be the classic white cotton button down. You can get it if you want, but let's remember that you can still experiment a little bit with different fabrics and silhouettes. The famous little black dress. This one is non-negotiable. Its origin has been attributed to Coco Chanel. And it is the one piece that you should have if you want to have a Parisian chic wardrobe. The reason why they are so famous and important is because of how versatile they are. A little black dress can be dressed up or down. Black clothing is the to-go option basically all over the world. And sometimes it will be a part of the dress code, for example, black dress parties not to be confused with black tie events. So even if black isn't one of the colors in your palette, you should still have at least one little black dress for the length. Even if it's called a little black dress, it doesn't actually have to be little. It doesn't have to be a mini dress. It can be longer. Actually, the go-to little black dress would be a midi black dress. At least two or three pairs of trousers, there are lots of options, you can get different types of fits and different colors. Jeans. If you are into fashion, you probably know about the millennial Gen Z feud about jeans and how they want to kill skinny jeans, but we are going for our own staples. If you look good in skinny jeans, wear them. If you look good in bootcut jeans, wear them. If you look good in straight jeans or mom jeans, boyfriend jeans, wear them. Finding the right pair of jeans is not very easy for everyone, so once you find yours, keep them and don't let anyone tell you that they are out of style, because these ones are timeless pieces. It is a little bit different if someone tells you that a different pair of jeans does look really good on you. That one does apply for you to start experimenting a little bit. The striped top. The classic top would be the striped Breton shirt with 21 stripes. Fun fact, they represent each of the victories of Napoleon Bonaparte. You don't have to get the exact top, we're all different, so experiment a little bit with different widths or even the direction of the stripes. Flat shoes. 
Ballet flats are the usual ones, but mules and other types of flat shoes are also an option. Heels. For your everyday wear, since this is based on people who live in Paris, most of us don't enjoy wearing heels if you need to walk that much. This type the stereotype, if you have ever been to Paris or any big city where getting driven around isn't the norm, you will learn to appreciate ankle heeled boots. And for special occasions, you should have like a, like a pair of signature heels. This one is your own choice. They can be pumps, they can be sandals, they can be kitten heels, and any other style that you like. Sneakers. Go for the casual sneaker type instead of the sporty or very chunky shoes. The staple would be a pair of white or cream sneakers, but after you have that one, you can start adding a few other colors for more versatility. Coats and jackets. Since most of the items that I have listed before have been like staple basic pieces, you can really take advantage of coats and jackets to make your outfits a little bit more interesting. It can be something simple or something with a little bit more of a streetwear-ish look. And we also have sweaters. I do feel like you need your basic neutral sweaters, but then just like with other things, you can start adding a few accent pieces as well. Accessories. The first ones you can get would be the perfect watch for yourself and a pair of sunglasses. Of course, you can also get the classic French beret. Bags. Of course, we all know about the French designer bags, but you don't need one, of course. But find something simple and easy to pair, something very classic, and then maybe two or three bags that you can use for more casual occasions, and at least one for formal events, like a clutch. Jewelry. Usually something simple, it depends on your body structure. If you have a bigger frame, like me, Wearing something very small and dainty won't do anything for you and if you have a smaller body frame, wearing something very simple but big would upstage you. So a really big part of it is knowing your body because we're going for simple pieces and in order for something simple to look very good on you, it has to be the right item. Keep in mind that when I talk about body structures and body frames, it has nothing to do with weight, it is about your bones, flesh and proportions. Here is a playlist talking a little bit more about it. If this is your style, tell me a little bit about your experience with it. And if you wish to use this for your own personal style inspiration, how would you reinterpret the Parisian chic style to make it your own? Personally, I don't wear many blouses because I'm always cold, even if I'm in a tropical country. You can definitely hear the birds <laughs> in all of my videos. Um, but if this was my style, I would get neutral colored knit tops and cardigans and different accent bold jackets and bags. I really love bags and shoes. I would go for simpler shoes, but having like really interesting statement bags would be something that I would really like. If you want to hire me as your personal stylist or you want to get one of my downloadable style guides, you can go to kogustyling.com. Have a nice day and I will see you soon with the Italian maximalism video.